Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Finn Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant Mm -hmm. and Pedro Mateus, and everyone at home (laughs) watching us live on Twitch after the fact, listening to us in podcast form. Yeah, it's another week. Jill, what do you got going on? It's it's raining in LA. I know everyone panics just a little bit when they see that, like, oh no, it's the rain, we must go inside. But then you're like, wait a minute, I'm just always inside so <laughs> yeah oh well it did kind of scare me because we had a pretty good lightning and thunderstorm as well which doesn't happen all that often here nice. in socal <laughs> maybe like once a year <laughs> so it, and it was unexpected i knew it was going to rain but i didn't know we were going to have a little thunderstorm so things rumbled <laughs> but i'm actually a little sad because this weekend would have been the weekend of the southern california linux expo that many of us here at lgc go to <laughs> So I'm I'm sad I'm not gonna be seen yet. <laughs> not yet, but it's it is scheduled for next March 2022. Uh so everyone go out and get vaccinated <laughs> so I we get, can have uh, the convention. <laughs> to not have to worry about what type of sketchy bandwidth situations coming my way that Saturday night. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> pre-recorded we have to pre-record our interviews and then our live show. We don't have to worry about it this year. <laughs> It's always interesting. Pedro, you decided not to buy the watch. Uh, outside of having to go into work tomorrow, what's new with you? I had uh, not much. Uh, all of the stuff that uh, all of the new soldering kits that I ordered on eBay are still on the very slow boat from China. So uh, I'm still staring at the <laughs> staring at the pine sill longingly. It's like one of these days, one of these days I will hold you in my hand again. But uh yeah, nope, that, seriously, major kudos once again to <laughs> the fine, fine folks at Pine, because that is an amazing soldering iron. <laughs> A very good awesome. job. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you like it. And it was reasonably priced, too, wasn't it? $25, yeah. yeah. I know, can't beat that. <laughs> wow. That. This, I think the last uh, two nights, I've been trying to get all the rough edges polished off of just a fun little video I'm making about the microphone preamp that I picked up, which is the Yamaha 88AD number 8 HR. Hmm. I've been flubbing that line in voice of 88HR. <laughs> just, oh, Yamaha. And this is, this is nothing new with them. It's, <laughs> like, everything's word salad. Like, my old. Yamaha Electric's uh, SE250. At least I could get that, but 88 HR is a pain to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And outside of that, I'm having that normal situation to where, hey, I wanted to get this world clock module for the uh, audio thing I have in the computer. And last time I looked, everyone was selling them. They were cheap. I'm getting like 50, 60. No one's selling them right now on eBay. Okay, mm-hmm. that's how that works. I just nodded my head. Made me a little grumpy, but <laughs> <laughs> I, you to the point in your life where you're just like, yeah, that's just how that works. There's no point getting upset, but just wait it out. So, um, Linuxy stuff is going to start off with laptopy stuff, and typically this is a uh, Pedro's special day. But I want to start off this with this is from Framework, and they announced, hey, we're going to try something new. Do you like Legos? Oh boy, do we got a plan for you. Uh, remember when Google was trying something like this with a phone that you know never came to fruition? Well, mm-hmm. we're going to have another take at it. Before we get started, <laughs> for the video listeners, mm-hmm. where do we rate the Photoshopped monitor picture? Because I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I, I got up close personal with it. That's like 8 out of 10 because the real. Yeah. You know, the, There's no glare. Is a but... shoop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if that is a shoop, it is. Uh, oh, it's a shoop. If you zoom in well in the bottom left hand corner, there's uh, it wasn't quite aligned properly. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I didn't actually pour over the image. I just looked at the screen. It was like, eh, okay, sure. <laughs> I, I could buy that. <laughs> but, you know, they're just like, hey, we are going to make a laptop system. And they're kind of the dream because we've never had a standard mm-hmm. for laptops. And we're going to give you a nice case with optional motherboard and stuff like that. We're talking socketed storage, Wi-Fi, two slots for memory. The entire main board can be swapped down for performance boost, kind of like a regular laptop. But then they're going to develop an ecosystem and a community with partners to build, sell the modules through a framework marketplace. I think that's quite mm. neat. Now, however, the specs, pricing, pre-order typing, 
All that's coming later, along with a ship mm-hmm. date. And they say in the next couple of mm-hmm. weeks, but I'm interested. Unfortunately, I don't think this is going to be my price range. I just got that feel. Mm. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> I do think it's cool that you'll you know, be able to replace your motherboard in the laptop as easy as upgrading memory. That is really, really compelling. And we've wanted this for so long. I mean, there was a, a phone who tried to do this. And uh, so it, it would be nice if this actually works and this company is like Pine 64, where it actually happens. <laughs> I'm going to admit that I spent, <laughs> the reason I was zoomed in on that picture is I genuinely can't tell if that is rendered or real. If that is rendered. It might be an actual picture job. with that. Yeah. Choop. <laughs> I'm say good job. I want something like it, but what do you think about that, Pedro? You're the laptop expert, and by that I mean you have a collection of them to your left. Mm-hmm. Well, I have one like right here, the See, one yeah. <laughs> that lately I've taken apart the most, <laughs> the ThinkPad X240. <laughs> Normal people play video games, develop off. Pedro's like, you know what? I don't have anything to do. I'm taking this thing apart again. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's fun and, and that one is really simple uh so yes i do like taking laptops apart and one of the things that really annoy me is especially hp when it comes to taking their laptops apart i'd rather not if i'm honest it's like the one brand that i really don't uh aces laptops can also be pretty bad some some of the other ones are passable but yeah, like the ability to switch the different ports connectivity out that you have on a laptop is awesome. That's outside of like the old uh, PCM CIA slots that people could just put whatever they wanted on them. That would be amazing. But much like you, I I want to see the pricing. But yeah, I, I too have a sneaking suspicion I won't be able to afford it, whatever they're going to ask for that because... Yeah. The, but that, the swappable ports, that looks, hey, if I want USB C, yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's really nice. Again, it's something you didn't really see until the, well, after the PCM CIA slots kind of went out of fashion in laptops. You didn't mm-hmm. really have that anymore. At most, you could take out the DVD, CD drive and put in a caddy for an extra hard drive or mm-hmm. SSD. That was it. And that's really nice. Oh, I need an HDMI for that uh, presentation I'm doing. Click. Done. Yeah. There we go. That's amazing. <laughs> I want an RS-232 port for what? Because I'm a hipster. <laughs> USB. <laughs> Just use USB. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, one of the neat features also about this laptop is that it is fully recyclable. And that's awesome. Yes. You know. Uh, <laughs> just easy to recycle all the parts. Um, I have a few computers in my collection that do allow that, and it's nice to see a laptop coming along that will uh, be fully recyclable. And mm-hmm. the other cool thing is that it respects your right to repair and upgrade. And in some countries, that's the law now. So this definitely solves that issue. And it has a 1080p 60 frames per second webcam on it. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, someone came out with a 60 FPS 1080p. Laptop manufacturers have uh, Laptop. proven that they can really, really grind down 1080p 60. I mean, yeah. <laughs> most of them don't even bother. It's like, ah, 720p 30. That's fine. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> if you're lucky, you get 30. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it'll be advanced. You're like, hey, where'd you put it? Where you see it? I know it's like, nah. I'm like, where'd you put it on the back? <laughs> Why? <laughs> It's on the top left corner of the lip, so it's always pointing down at your keyboard. But why? Why not? <laughs> why not? <sighs> so this showed up on Reddit from user Paranoid Factoid, and they weren't very happy. Now, the reason I threw this in earlier this week, um, someone everyone knows, Matthew um, Strider, what decided mm-hmm. that he wanted to get blendy with it with, what does he have, like 5700 XT AMD card? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And he learned that if you're trying to run the latest and greatest uh, with Blender, mm, not going to have that great experience with it. 
no no and um well uh this uh this person paranoid factoid had a long-standing bug uh over at the rockham uh which is amd's open source gpu compute platform and they decided you know what just see i kind of want to see what people will what amd has to say about this because he tried a bunch of different things and he decided you know what let's just file a bug report and it got closed and what happened was uh he took what the closure uh, the closure call that he posted the screenshot of uh what the closure said took that at face value which is something that never happened on the internet ever completely mm-hmm. unprecedented and decided to run with it then of course uh amd persons like oh someone's speaking ill of us uh on reddit <laughs> we must go and defend ourselves uh amd person jumped through the comments and started saying look this was never a thing uh rockham was never supposed to be for user land it was never supposed to work with gui applications uh you could get it to work at one point and if you have a recent enough stack kernel drivers uh gpu hardware etc etc you could maybe uh get something working at this point but that is not officially supported and um everyone immediately uh starts calling about uh that's not what you said in the closure and that's not what all of these other people that have had calls closed because amd drivers on linux uh uh all of these people just had their calls closed and then the amd person realized oh yeah i can see there's a few extra calls that i didn't know about yeah yeah (laughs) Okay, basically, this is getting everything updated to what is official. Because, you know, current 2045 release has problems with Blender and Resolve. But then again, this is nothing new. Anybody who's ever had to tango with um, using the AMD GPU Pro drivers knows this on Linux. This Mm -hmm. this has been known for years. Is that, hey, if it works, that's neat. Uh, But outside of that, don't rely on it. Like, even a you know, what AMD has done here, they haven't really changed anything. That's why I want to bring this up. They've just cleaned up the verbiage because some people were under the impression that this stuff was supported or it worked, you know, because mm-hmm. they bought a card <laughs> and they wanted to use the pro drivers to do production pro stuff. No, no, but it, we were talking about this in the pre-show. I am kind of like, I, I really wish they would put a little love and care into the pro drivers because I have jokingly say that it must be the core team from ATI responsible (laughs) (laughs) that, you know, we're merged in when AMD nommed ATI because this is the level of Linux support that I came to know, love and respect from ATI. (laughs) Like get bent, be grateful. It kind of works. I I see where they're coming from, but I just think that's something, you know, everyone should know that you're going to run into issues like that. Even like Blackmagic support, you know, Blackmagic fully supports OpenCL, supports OpenCL on AMD. Look at a Mac, look on Windows, Mm -hmm. on Linux. You're getting ready to install DaVinci Resolve. Their official Mm -hmm. policy is, and I'm not really paraphrasing, is good luck with that. Um... They, they will not support anything that if you get it to work, yeah, take a picture, man. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If someone with black magic is, if black magic themselves are saying, yeah, that's not, you know, officially supported, you have problems in your driver stack. Then again, I did use a laptop with uh, an ATI, <laughs> a graphics card uh, on Linux for many, many years. Mm. And FGLRX was terrible. And then I just want uh, everything to uh, get back together, man, because for gaming, desktop use, Wayland stuff like that, AMD is the way to play. Yeah. That, that's, a, yeah. that's definitely what you want to play with. You know, and Jordan recently bought an AMD card because, hey, he's like, I want one to play around with. But, you know, when it comes to doing stuff, like production stuff, it's, 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 it's just a minefield. Like, there's not really a current solution. It is a hack upon hack to get something up and running today yeah. without rolling stuff back. So 
Hopefully True. we'll get that fixed. But yeah. maybe you can just run CUDA directly on your Intel GPU. You don't mm-hmm. need NVIDIA. NVIDIA is stupid. There's a way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Zool. It's Zluda. CUDA on Intel <laughs> GPUs. Can't make this up. Um, now, this, this caught me off guard. Due to private reasons, I am currently unable to continue developing this project. If you want to take it over, hmm. Because my first thought, my first thought, well, let's go ahead and tell you what it is. It's a drop-in replacement for CUDA on Intel GPUs. I mean, if you get anything running mm-hmm. remotely like that, uh, performance can be close to, or even similar to OpenCL code. And you would need a Gen 9 newer Skylake, which uh, are supported by Intel Level 0. Now, it's very incomplete and more of a proof of concept, but mm-hmm. yeah. It, it's perform. I was like, oh, this is going to be something to laugh at. But no, it's not. I mean, it's pretty good. a significant delta. Some <laughs> things are even faster in this. Now, even he admits, like, why is it faster? Shrug emoji, but it works. It's kind of weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious is uh, what, what happened there, though, because because yeah, when I first hmm. saw this, it's like, hey, I bet somebody's going to come knocking on his door in a minute. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's a very interesting time and I think he uh, or they uh more correctly. Uh they knew that uh, as uh they made this second release which was 9 days ago. Mm-hmm. Made the second release of uh Zluda and all of a sudden <laughs> uh now that you know the crypto thing is happening Maybe it would be a good time. Oh yeah, this does. Uh, this improves GPU compute a lot on, uh, you know, the UDA side of the compute for Intel uh, GPU specifically. So let's put this out there. Let's let those people play with it, and then those people see it. Just like, do you want to, you know, actually get paid? Yeah. <laughs> Pedro's story is a lot more fascinating than mine, and mine, uh, Intel or AMD walks in and like, how much money do you want to come work for us? And like, let's get this in a product stuff. <laughs> See, I yeah. hope, I hope it's one of them too. I really do. It's far more likely to be the cryptos, considering. I don't think the crypto. Our I don't current think situation. The problem. The problem with your story again. I like your story better, but there's not necessarily like big crypto that's going to come in. Like, hey. It's not big crypto. It's just someone who has enough uh, of a presence to go, I can pay money if you do that for me. I mean, there's the whole thing about the PS5 also being unlocked for crypto mining. But yeah, <laughs> the only issue I take the timing with that is perfect <laughs> I, you know, is stopping development of it. Like, ooh, ooh, yeah. when, I, when I see a big corporation coming like, hey, we need to bring this in house. So leave what you have um, come over here crypto they don't care it's like hey man here's some money keep doing this yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i wish that you know we could see this on amd gpus wouldn't that be awesome cuda running on amd gpus running faster than uh open cl <laughs> <laughs> the market's kind of decided on cuda for compute now this a compatibility mm-hmm. layer you know they even in the initial outline of the documentation, he's like, I can't rule out the ability to run this on AMD hardware either. This could be possible. But something like this is definitely needed because everyone's targeting mm-hmm. CUDA. And why are they targeting CUDA? Because 10 years ago when everyone else was munching on glue sticks, NVIDIA was <laughs> dumping millions of dollars into development. And I was sitting around at the time going, NVIDIA, you're dumb. That's stupid. No one uses this. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess that worked out. I guess that's why you do that and I do this. Understood. I got it. And yeah, outside of like the OG Bitcoin that 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 made very heavy use of uh OpenCL and that's why AMD video cards were very expensive at one point in time. Well, they're very expensive again, but that's uh that's different. <laughs> <laughs> strange times so this needs a quick mention uh from the fine human beings over at red hat extending no cost red hat enterprise linux to open source organizations now again this falls clearly under things that should have been ready when they announced centos stream but hey mm-hmm. 
I know, I know. I understand. It's very tempting. But like, well, that's not good enough. It's better than like, the just, sexual RHL. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's decent because I, I saw this posted on the Internet. And believe this. Believe this or not. People had a problem with it. I, I was shocked. I couldn't. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It was immediately hit with. But I still have to create an account. I'm like, but it's real for yes, you have to create an account. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I I, I don't understand. But I'm gonna say good on that. You know, and they have expanded it. No, you can't run it for free at home on four thousand VMs. <laughs> yeah. Well you well, can. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> if you really wanted to, you could. <laughs> well, what I like is, you know, um, Red Hat has been, you know, having these ha having these offerings for open source orgs like the like the Gnome Foundation for a lot of years. It's just sometimes people didn't know about it, and uh, they talked about that in the article, and they actually stated. We frequently provide no cost access to RHEL to these groups, but the process isn't as formalized, consistent, accessible, or transparent as we'd like it to be. And uh, yeah, if they were a little more transparent when the CentOS uh, change was going down, it would have been not a problem. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure someone would have they, immediately went. <gasps> They're trying misdirection. They're trying to point out, yeah. oh, look is, at the Chinese and uh, we're going to do other things. Of course. And <laughs> behind the scenes, I can absolutely know to what I can speak of. This just wasn't ready at the time of the announcement. The yeah, announcement it wasn't ready, caught obviously. the company off guard. Yeah. Like, wait, what? Oh. Oh, we're doing that now? All right. Okay. Um, scramble, yeah. scramble, scramble. <laughs> so, uh, you know, a lot of this definitely comes across. And in some ways it is. It's, it's playing catch up. Because this just got put in motion kind of I don't know where. But hey, mm -hmm. it is there. <laughs> Feel free to like hate on it all you want, but I like that the option. Aww. I listen, man, some people need their haterade in the morning. They're like, I need something to be angry at. This'll do. And I'm like, oh rough day. I'm like, yeah, I have to be angry at Red Hat giving away Rel to open source. Oh, oh, but it's makes not me Red so Hat, it's IBM. <laughs> They're the ones manipulating things behind Oh okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so now going forward it looks like we're going to hear all the details now <laughs> we're going to get have that communication now. So. okay <laughs> so this next announcement's kind of interesting as long as you don't have a brand new shiny amd gpu yes <laughs> this is true <laughs> so this is exciting blender 2.29 has been released and it has lots of great new features like so many we can't even go Dinosaurs. through them all <laughs> Dinosaurs. <laughs> so what i thought was really cool is now you can manipulate your message messages <laughs> now you can manipulate your meshes using a new node-based editor and this makes uh, a lot easier for finer detail of modification and uh, you also have the ability to create your own custom modifier Shoes. in the gui you can make sure Yes. <laughs> yes. Without having to write your own <laughs> script to create one. I've had to do this a lot in Maya and 3D Studio Max and Blender. Create my own own modifier scripts. <laughs> so this will make it make it easy peasy lemon squeezy on Blender. And uh one of my other favorite things now is that you can copy your modifier settings from one object to the next, like you can in Maya and 3DS Max. That's been one of my m most missing features out of uh, Blender that I have on the other uh, 3D platforms. So now it's there in Blender, my favorite of all the 3D animation packages. And Yay, also, physics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the grease pe pencil strokes can now be edited like Bezier curves, which really, uh, really is something we needed. And there's just been... God, there's so many updates to sculpting, um, faster cycles rendering, better compositing with EV, new physics simulation methods, and just so much more. I can't even <laughs> go through them all. So make sure to look at our show notes and go to the link and see all the wonderful new fe features of Blender 2.92. So are we still pretending that uh, Blender has a video editor? <laughs> yeah, Let's well, they, make somebody they have improved watch. it. <laughs> They actually improved it. I haven't used it since they uh, redid it, but um, 
I've used uh, uh, the skull. I want to go back and, and play with it. It's been a few years. But, uh, <laughs> every time I, I get I get hit with that, it reminds me of uh, playing around with like uh, Cinderella or something. I'm like, oh no. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you see, I, I remember the early days of NLEs in the late nineties, early two thousands, and like they they got that locked down. They got that aesthetic, and like that's confusing to a point of no. But yeah. <laughs> Devil here on with it, and um, we got to get Pedro. Yeah. We got to get Pedro into three D modeling. Yeah, no, <laughs> as impressive as the like Blender new version announcement posts, especially like the l- last few ones, even the small version, small revisions. There's like a lot of they're huge. stuff that they're introducing. They're huge. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. That's yeah, that's very nice to see. And it's so you know, <laughs> Blender has come so far especially in the last few years that now i can teach that as the major tech platform on linux mm-hmm. i don't have to do maya on linux i can do one blender. of the good things like <laughs> blender is for 3d modeling it's hyper intuitive um yes nowadays as opposed to yeah, the no, it, yeah, Ouija yeah, board it's, it's it used to be when they read the interface yeah. uh, <laughs> but yeah i mean it's absolutely useful if i need to do something my my brain immediately rejects everything I've previously learned and I have to start from zero every single time. But I can get up to speed usually in about a day to get like thing made and get it out. But mm. hey, good work. Um over at Blender. At Firefox. Yeah. yeah, Firefox 86. So this is a um, even though it's not a huge release, it has some really cool new features, including this uh Firefox 86 stable release has the ability to watch multiple videos in picture and picture mode <laughs> and it works pretty good. <laughs> so now you Great can multitask day. and watch YouTube videos, <laughs> several YouTube videos at once. <laughs> if you can focus on, on watching two at a time and some of us actually can. <laughs> now, um, if you want to have some fun, one thing you can do when I see a screenshot like this. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> That, I I don't scroll that hard. I'm sorry. More power to you if you have multiple video tabs open at one time. But Mm -hmm. hey, you can float them around. You can move them around because that's the thing you can do now. Uh, If somebody wants to send a or leave a comment at the bottom of the OMG Ubuntu article and be like, hey, dude, you need to check your tabs. (laughs) (laughs) just just split and plant that little niggle (laughs) Ooh, that will that that picture immediately disappears uh, i don't actually do that i say that as somebody who worries about that with videos and article publishing like whoa because i've had a couple of times i'm like nothing it's like it was just one of those like that's gonna cause questions Mm-hmm. <laughs> people are gonna ask about that okay yeah. no. <laughs> right and it's like that that's got too much backstory i'm glad we got that so that's pretty yeah. good browser uses gpu processes for canvas that's decent so we get the webgl drawing and all that fun stuff screen reader improvements is always nice to see link contrast mm-hmm. and uh how is like the gpu support in firefox these days Usable. Usable. It's, yeah. Uh, WebRTC is still a bit of a poop shoot, but um, for like mm-hmm. just general 2D canvas acceleration, it's actually pretty good. All right. But yeah, the, the big thing here is strict mode. That's one of the options that you could just click on now and it will automatically reject everything. It, uh, inner. Inner website cookies, all the tracking cookies, all of the basically the nasty stuff that came <laughs> from web developers running rampant for 30 odd years with minimal to no supervision <laughs> and doing whatever they want. Yeah, uh, it, it's unfortunate, but it's kind of necessary. Uh, but come on, on end- you can be like Facebook and be like, hey, if we can't get all that extra data we've got hooked on, you're hurting small businesses. Yes, <laughs> small businesses. I, okay, Facebook. I mean, <laughs> this is awesome. This is one time you want cookie gel. <laughs> cookie yeah. gel. Uh, it, it's, I, I already had uh, something like strict mode. It wasn't called strict mode, but yeah, all of the options that strict mode does, mm-hmm. I already have those enabled. And then I have you block origin to block all the ads, uh, and I have. Um, I don't care about cookies to get rid of the uh, cookie annoyo uh, screens oh, because yeah. when yeah. you're rejecting <laughs> all the cookies, the websites keep 
putting up that pop-up that goes, you should let tracking cookies, you should permit cookies. No. <laughs> I just disable JavaScript on that person. Yeah, that's something that I do frequently, too. That's the thing. It breaks the internet it nowadays. It does break, just yeah. Completely I, blanket disable JavaScript. People say that? <laughs> no, I use um, NoScript, which you know, it gives you a nice little option. And like the default mm. options for that usually give you a usable web, a usable web zone. No, you're not going to get the uh, fancy, annoying stuff that Pedro just described. And I know some people are like, no, I just, that would. It hampered my browsing experience. I like closing all those extra windows and having all that extra stuff. Now, occasionally you do run into the web zones that just won't load, and mm-hmm. I don't visit them. <laughs> if you're uh, in a situation where, like Ven where you can choose not to visit something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not an option for certain people, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... KDE Plasma is so bad, people have got to create an easy ways to restore sessions. Aww. Is that it, Pedro? Is that why this exists? Well, also, yes. As uh, someone who's used uh, KDE for a long, long time. Know, it's just like set, um, setting them up for an easy way to defend a plasma. It's like, ooh. Uh, no. <laughs> I am using Katie. I'm currently the only one, uh, you know, <laughs> of yeah. the hosts on the show that's using mm-hmm. Katie. So I will tell you, it is problematic. The uh, the one thing that I was it does using let you KDE do when you were in grade school, son. Uh, yes, yep. as I said, <laughs> right Aww. now I am the one using Katie. Oh, look at <laughs> yes, me, Mister Nonlinear Times. <laughs> 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 you know specific point in time uh the yeah no there kitty gives you a lot of options a lot and you will inevitably click the wrong thing and break your session so chances are you might want to back that up and con save with a k uh they, they they're very keen to point it out that it does have a k uh, yes. they, <laughs> uh they give you the option to save uh your configuration and your theme and your wallpaper and everything else that pertains to kde you can easily back it up with just a command and then you can get another command get a list of all the backups that you have and with another command you can change between the different layouts that you've created on the fly and uh, the moment i realized that's oh that's what this is useful for okay (laughs) that that yes that (laughs) the ability to switch to how to set different layouts because well, a lot of people have ADHD nowadays, and you kind of do want to try something new just to keep your attention focused every now and then. And if you can switch, uh, complete lay- completely switch the layout and wallpaper and theme and all the configurations and how the windows swipe from one way to the other. I actually have uh, effects disabled because KWIN is still a crashy mess. But... Uh, if you want to have all of that it will actually back up all of those configs which is amazing and you don't have to manually go to dot kd and dot config plasma and yeah dot local share files. plasma to back it up manually that's nice yeah hmm. <laughs> so it's like a fancy way to drag your home directory back over itself like i don't have that no yep. but it's also real time which is really cool <laughs> quick and easy real time and you know especially after spending hours configuring and customizing your desktop save <laughs> this it. is nice you can yeah. save and save it <laughs> you mean cutting off the wallpaper <laughs> and changing to the high contrast theme yes yeah <laughs> you could have that you could actually set a keyboard shortcut to run con save to load that particular yeah. config it's like boss mode like control windows f12 Everything's gone. <laughs> I definitely could use this for for Flexbox and Window Maker, which I'm running right now as Window Maker. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if I'm sold, but I will keep it under consideration. <laughs> Yeah, Katie, that's part of the reason why I like Katie quite as much as I do is the amount of configuration options that it gives you. But you will inevitably um, poop 
the bed, so to speak. So yeah. it's, it's nice to have a way to get back to a known working state. And uh, now everyone that uses KD and likes to change themes and the layouts on with a significant frequency, absolutely try con save. All right. Right on. Right on. We got a slice pie. Before that, we want to thank all the beautiful people making Ooh. all of our stuff possible <laughs> over at patreon.com for slash Linux Gaming Guys. That's how we fund all of our shenanigans, all of our nonsense. If you want to hop in, treat yourself, you get some extra stuff. This is just the creamy, gooey middle of this show. If you like this in podcast form, it's normally like an hour and a half, two hours long because you get the pre-show and the post-show. Mm-hmm. Custom RSS feed, you don't have to put in passwords or anything like that with Patreon. Then it's give you a nice little URL, drop it in, you're done. Hey, you don't have to worry about it. Early access to some stuff. I'm going to be dropping a uh, rough cut video. I like to do that. Give everyone a little preview. I'm like, hey, did I mess up anything? Do you want something added? That's going to be there. That's where it shows up in Patreon. Also shows up in our Discord if you have access to that. It's an easy way to do that. Yeah, you just link that up. That's a piece of cake. Also, if you're a Twitch sub, you can do the same thing. Hop in Discord. That's where we hang out the other six days a week. It's fun to get in there and chat or sometimes just sit back and watch. Yeah, uh, <laughs> which a lot of people are seem to be very happy to do. <laughs> you know what? It's always fun to watch the cycle of like, oh no, the entertainment stopped. I guess I better put something in the machine and let's mm-hmm. see if it'll do something. <laughs> dance, dance, come on, <laughs> dance. Well, it is fun because of the uh, time difference. Because I'm usually up at like four, four fifteen in the morning, and usually Pedro's going at it with Britannia side, and that rolls around to him, you know. Australia than back. It's always going with something. Time zones. How do they work? I don't yeah. know, man. I don't trust them. I think they're a conspiracy. <laughs> I, I don't know how far I could take that logically with a straight face. Um, I don't know, but you will hit one niche or another. <laughs> this is true. Go check us out loading scenecast.com. Uh, we got like a support the show. This is how we do it. We, we don't have ads. We don't have anything else. We, our business model is, hey, we're going to put it up. If you like it, kick us a buck a week. That'd be brilliant. Goes directly back into the show. Goes into hosting. And we continue to do fascinating things. At least I think we do. Pedro does. Oh. But I do. <laughs> they're agreeable. We things. all do. <laughs> Did you get your free video game on the PS4? <laughs> that would require me to have turned it on. <laughs> This is, this is what I work with. This is the motivation. <laughs> Thank you for proving my point. So, now let's get into a slice of pie. Uh, a little bit pie. of mobile computer. Is that pecan? Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like pecans, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess. I, I don't know. It, it looks like a big... It says Ugh. classic apple. It doesn't look good to me. <laughs> Tis a pie. Classic apple. Oh, yeah. it's just apple slices. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Very tidy man. apple slices. <laughs> Pedro, <laughs> how do, is it going to get hot in... Man, that... You know, is it going to get hot in here? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's already very warm in this particular room, uh, but... Uh, we're also in the Northern Hemisphere, so chances are it will get pretty toasty very soon. So That's you may another want to, conspiracy. Hemispheres. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you may want to get started on this. So when the next uh, ice age rolls around, you will have a thermos uh, of your own. And yeah, the thermos, uh, as built by Joe Truncale, is basically a Raspberry Pi that controls a thermostat obviously, from the name, and just uh, activates all the relays and takes care of everything. And the cherry on top, and at the same time, the slap across the face, is that the GUI front end, for Joe's case specifically, runs on iOS. (laughs) He said Uh. that his goal was to get it running on his phone, and his phone just so happens to be an iPhone. And kudos to him. He managed to get everything. It's a Python script uh, that takes care of uh, sending all the signals to the Pi. GPIO, you've, if you've played with the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi, chances are you know um, enough to even create an app that will work on anything. But it is, it is a very, very involved, as far as Raspberry Pi projects that we've covered here, this one is 
a thing all over all of its own it's so do you think that, we need to come impressive. up with a new metric of uh, a scale of one to five to uh with your raspberry pi projects a chance of burning house down because this, this is probably four four and a quarter oh yeah no the, this is a i would say a solid five <laughs> if all of the relays are active and you're driving all of the uh heating elements yes that that that's a solid five on that one <laughs> I'm down with this. Uh, probably not something I would play around with because when it comes to, I have the, I have two big chunky heating things outside, one for upstairs and one for like the rest of the house and uh, m- barely, barely tangled with it. I replaced one with a Nest thermostat that just Fs off half mm. the time. That That is the most useless piece of <laughs> kit. And the other one is like from 1960s, you know, it's probably made out of lead. And radiation. <laughs> oh, it's delicious is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Something like this, like the idea of a smart home being able to control it with the app. And that's why I wanted to play around with a nest, but the nest is fine at night, in the middle of the night, you boom, clink, 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 and all the vents. Come. I'm like, why are you cutting on? <laughs> Felt like it, bro. Deal with it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, we it's, had, it's surprisingly uh, well made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we had uh, replaced our um, original uh, uh, '70s heater uh, with one of the newer, you know, Honeywell uh, uh, dials, and it didn't work as good. So we put the old one back. <laughs> now it's happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we only have, you know, we have a small house, so we only need one heater. <laughs> always cool to yeah, see something it's hard like that. if you have a big house with lots of <laughs> different needs <laughs> so pedro if uh somebody at home was planning to burn down their house and they wanted to tell us about it <laughs> we uh th- this is the one time that we would say you need to send us an email to <laughs> an actual email address mine is pedro at linuxgamecast.com uh, just send an email there because we're we're going to want that link to that video whatever it is you were doing we don't need to see the you know the actual fire taking mm-hmm. place we can extrapolate but what you were doing before do you it's, think I could you know, send the, the an email about the uh, benefits of using <laughs> plastic spoons? <laughs> and jamming them into uh, the electricity sockets? <laughs> no, no, like eating soup with them. Oh, okay. It feels a bit counterproductive. You know, no, warm liquid are, plastic yeah, spoon. It, it, listen, <laughs> I've heard rumors that they make a lot less noise. <laughs> Oh, that's not a spoon. That's a uh, paintbrush. Plastic <laughs> being paintbrushes. Being washed on the side of, yeah. <laughs> being washed on the side of a, a little glass oh, jar. Are you accusing Nori it of being pain? Uh, it, uh, it's me <laughs> accusing Nori of uh, being an illustrator? No. No, eating pain. That's what I heard. How dare I? That's what I will make you say when I send the clip of you accusing. <laughs> But no, no, no. Uh, you can tell us, or uh, yes, yeah, so if you want to scream at Nori because uh, she's making clanging noises in the background, you can. Uh, but the best way to get in touch with us <laughs> is to go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button on the little nav bar at the top. Pick uh, LWDW mm-hmm. as the show that you'd like to send your feedback to, and we will read it right here, right now. I had to update Some conditions it. apply. I had to update it a little bit because, uh, <laughs> man, I, I get the faith. I get faith in um, game developers every now and then. I'm like, hey, we do a panel show, you know, figure out how many people's on it, send it. Been getting too many emails like, would you like a key or here's a key for a video game? It is not necessarily, it's Linux related. I've had to change, go back and readapt the wording with bold for three. Yes. Mm. <laughs> I'm a little cross about having to do that because, again, I lose faith in humanity every time I have to. <laughs> Did, uh, has anyone reintroduced the blink tags? Is that like a WordPress plugin? <laughs> three. <laughs> I'm, yeah, not going, go. I'm not going to say I was in GIMP. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the sizes to line up with the actual font but maybe i was mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> animated gifts so brian writes in mm-hmm. stream red hat which is topical this has been sitting around for a minute but i would have decided to throw it in uh since mm-hmm. we were talking about red hat 
And hey, we were talking about blood. I didn't even realize that. I did it good. Does Black Magic have plans for EL7? Is that Red Hat 7? Yep. Cento West. Oh, Red Hat. Red Hat 7. EL7. Oh, <laughs> Enterprise Linux 7. 7. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going, okay. Does Black Magic have plans for Enterprise Linux 7 going end of life? DaVinci needs that to run. Will they move to Rocky or Stream? Let on running Stream in the studio. Pedro, do you plan on running stream? Uh, I have a laptop that's currently running CentOS stream. How's that working? Uh, relatively well. I don't even really use that laptop, so <laughs> <laughs> probably not the best judge. But <laughs> Jill, have you thought about installing stream on Steve's Etch a Sketch? Uh, no, I, just, I still have a, a CentOS classic that I haven't updated yet, <laughs> but I don't need to update because it's running older software. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Black magic. Uh, I I think I know what you're talking about because 7.3 is the official version of Red Hat that DaVinci Resolve supports. And correct, yeah. I've talked to uh, I've like shot back in. I think David over in Black Magic because like, what are your plans, man? Because that's going EOL in less than 300 days. Like shrug mm-hmm. emoji. It's like, ah, oh, so mm-hmm. you're going to just write it into the ground and see what happens? Shrug emoji. <laughs> I don't know. Black Magic does black magic stuff. I mean, appropriately named company sometimes, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'd just say run DaVinci Resolve on Debian because quietly in the background, they've updated it. Mm-hmm. It used to be that you would have to run uh, make resolve deb, make deb resolve to generate the Debian. You can just do the run file on Debian these days. That used to be the domain strictly of uh, Fedora and CentOS and RHEL, but works on Debian now, it's just fine. So I think this is going to be more platform dependent, but yeah, running stream in the studio? Uh, I'm not going to say no, but yeah, that would require like, I don't know, sponsorship or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> You want to pay a me lot to of work. Your yeah, sure. <laughs> that, that sounds a lot like being a test subject. <laughs> I would have to be a paid <laughs> test subject. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we'll <laughs> stick with Debian for the time being, at least. Um, tell me what James has to say, Pedro. Well, James has quite a lot to say. Uh, he says he's using a Behringer's uh, Berenger Xenix. <laughs> the Behringer's uh, Bears. Berenger, yes. <laughs> yes. Mixing with bears. I was already moving on to the Xenix and my mouth was still on <laughs> Behringer. So, yeah, it's a Behringer Xenix uh, X1222 USB as an analog mixer and the Focusrite as is audio and uh, MIDI interface. Uh, on principle, uh, use case is audio and MIDI recording with our door, hydro and VCV rack on Ubuntu Studio 2004. Sorry, 20.4. Uh, the Xenix received uh, beer <laughs> unwillingly. I think we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why I threw that in because everyone knows those feels. If it's not beer, it's soda drink. Tea. Or, yeah. right. <laughs> Bubbly. And that just, oh no. Is sticky, <laughs> and uh, he managed to actually coax it back into service, but apparently it still has gaps in functionality and noisy players at the upper limits, even when the master volume is all the way down. Uh, he is thinking to replace them both with a single one mixer interface, and uh, he's asking, is there something other than the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK that he should consider? Like... Uh, Apparently, he very much likes your uh, low-cost Linux attitude and very mm-hmm. much respects your opinion, Ven. So take that. And <laughs> uh, he was also trying to sync external sequencer and MIDI keys. So low latency is the goal at hand, so it would seem. Uh, preferably below seven milliseconds. And uh, once again, he strikes back. He loves your videos. Thanks. Well, that's why I'm going <laughs> to... What's the recommendation then? <laughs> I don't know. This is for you. Uh, uh-uh. This is what you think. <laughs> this is me deflecting responsibility. <laughs> that doesn't work. No, sorry. Jill, suggestions? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any suggestions. I'm sorry. I'm not an audio engineer. <laughs> I know basics. <laughs> 
Does it make boops? Okay, I'm good. <laughs> it doesn't work. Like when I'm in here, I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the rack of yeah. Yes, I just, I just keep plugging stuff in. It keeps working, but I don't know. I'm like Jerry from Rick and Morty. <laughs> I will say this: in 2021, I've genuinely had this conversation with a couple of people on our Linux audio, and I've gotten some mm-hmm. blowback from it. Is uh, there's no mixer in here at all. I, I don't. I haven't used a mixer in years, and I know that's a very typical like first reaction when you get into recording. Like, hey, I'm going to be recording, or if I'm going to be doing podcasting, um, you want to get a mixer. I'm like, what do you need a mixer for? You're supposed to have a mixer. No, no, you're not. Uh, what? <laughs> I I do use a mixer, but I use a digital mixer. I use the mixer in on door, and that's what I suggest people do because. You're not limited to like four, 12, 24 inputs. You're using the digital mix. So you're, you're only limited to whatever interface that you plug in to your system. You know, if you get eight and you want to put another eight on that, it's a piece of cake. Now, a common piece of uh, throwback I get from like, but I want to use outbound analog gear. Like, well, go buy a fixie. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> I would say extreme reaction, but then again, eh. uh, it's me too. I mean, when, when you put them in the Venn Vin diagram, like, come on, yeah. and it tracks. <laughs> I, I get uh, out, outbound, outboard gear is fun to play with. It's great, but uh, like you can get insert jacks and stuff on audio interfaces. That's not going to be a problem. A more valid concern is I want to use my finger digits. You know, I'm used to having faders. I want my buttons to press. That's where something like, um, I don't know if it's going to show up. You can kind of see this stuff over here. These are control surfaces. They're MIDI control surfaces. They allow me to control the mixer like I normally would. I have all my faders, got a bunch of buttons. I can make them do whatever I want. Get mutes, sends, oxes, jog wheels, stuff like that that you typically wouldn't see on a mixer. You pick one of those up for, I don't know. Two, three hundred bucks, which is about the same. You can get the X Touch One. You can get away using that by yourself, man. Just one like that for mm-hmm. like home recording, like 150, 200 bucks. And then you're done. Like, yeah. Having the analog mixer stuff, like there's I'm I'm done with that life because there's always <laughs> tracking something down. There's there's always a scratch or a hiss or one of the trim um, trim pots or just not working right you're pulling it shooting some goo into it and you're like hey maybe it's working now or it's got a weird hum in it somewhere gone done that life dead use some plugins it's brilliant they get the job done that's how we do everything here so yeah Mm -hmm. uh also i'm not an audio engineer so don't listen to anything i just said (laughs) (laughs) live in that digital future though yeah um some people will I I get it. This this is the hard thing for me because I like playing with analog. I'm like, hey, we can get interesting sounds. You can get those sounds digitally. Plugins are the same. You know, I've had people blow back at me with, well, I can't possibly get the sound that I could get with my sixty dollar desktop mixer. I'm like, correct. I don't think I can make my uh, audio chain sound that bad. So. <laughs> But it, it's not bad. It's warm. It's a warm it sound. Is genuinely <laughs> bad. Um, yeah, it's a character. Character. Yeah. It's, 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 so does tossing your cat in a rubbish bin and throwing it down some stairs. But I don't suggest doing that no. either, man. <laughs> That's just resulting in a very angry cat. Or a dented trash can. Right? <laughs> All right, beautiful Poor people. Kitty. We got to bounce out of here. Uh, be awesome. We will see you next week. But until then, we're going to roll some credits and uh, thanks, people, making this possible. Yeah. Watch me. I'm going to click buttons and I, I'm going to hit the fader on the digital thing. Maybe that's working. There we go. Here comes here. the music. It fades. <laughs> it fades. <laughs> Yay. That's not centered. You're just going to have to live with See, it. See, Ven Stone is the audio engineer <laughs> of the three of us. <laughs> so. Ven is the one who's uh, making the all the not black magic, but open source magic. 
<laughs> work into something that sounds amazing, especially when compared to other. Uh, <laughs> Yes, audio Other wizard. podcasts, yes. I just read the manual. That is true, Arthur. <laughs> audio wizard. <laughs> he does things for podcasting that no one else does or knows they can do. <laughs> and all other Linux. Yeah. <laughs> Linux. As if the curtain falls down, it's a bunch of Max. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a second the vm crashed no don't look at my <laughs> windows desktop <laughs> yes then now we have something for april fools <laughs> bye everyone we'll see you next week bye everyone <laughs>